So this is the next thing that you should attempt, you should do, uh, which is about an aircraft which weighs 22,000 kilogram. It is being pulled by 400 Newton force at this direction. And the center of gravity is here at G. It has uh, front wheel and rear wheels. So front wheel, probably we're going to write NA. Rear wheels, we're going to write NB. So of course, this is an, this is an aircraft. It's probably look like that from the top as an aircraft with wings so NA is probably here NA and NB is probably two wheels NB NB but we are analyzing uh, here at symmetrical so you gotta figure this out what happens and these two things uh, neglect lifting force of the wings and the mass of the wheels okay so do this okay do this I know you can get the answer easily but no do this first okay pause the video and do this so next Next is this question. Uh, you've got force here P. It's uh yeah, it's two hundred. What is the force? Huh? Fifty newton. Okay, this is uh fifty newton. It's applied at the handle. When you resolve this one, if you are confused, you can transfer the force. You're gonna get one direction there and one direction here. Definitely, this is 60. This will be 50 cos 60, right? This one will be 50 sine 60 degrees. Anything else? Yeah, mg is here. This one is your normal A. This one is your normal B. And uh, of course, your your cut definitely will have four wheels so you gotta figure out now nah, that one this is the center of gravity location okay what else yeah do this one so do this one don't look at the answer yet. Do that. Do this question first. Next, uniform crate in this pretty much almost the same. Uh, slightly different is that. Yeah, determine the smallest acceleration that will cause the crate either to tip or slip relative to the cart. This one you have to figure out a bit. And you've got friction coefficient. Static friction coefficient. Definitely draw all your free body diagram. Mm, but we are not analyzing this one, right? We're not analyzing this one. We are basically analyzing this box only. You are pulling it like that. And you are giving it an acceleration in this direction this is the acceleration so the crate to either tip or slip it's trying to move this way mg draw your mg so if we if it were to tip or slip, it's going to tip or slip that way. Eh? Uh, 
tip and if it were to slip it's going to slip this way so there is uh, friction in play this is slip direction friction will be this way yeah. this is your mu s normal which is equivalent to f s so do this one also mg is this way you've got two components this is definitely 15 degrees this one is mg cos 15 degrees this one will be oh no no this one is F fmg sine this one will be mg cos 15 degrees so try out this one also and finally this one yeah you can make it on your own there are a few more examples you can do here <coughs> all right so now we are at equations of motion about a fixed axis might have to do some might have to delete a few things eh? keep in annotation okay I'm gonna have to delete a few things okay so this was it so far we've been learning on uh, motion in a linear format linear linear this is also linear this is also linear and some curvy linear but now we are going to study about motion in a fixed axis why do we have to study this one yeah we need to know let's say this is a this is a lorry this lorry is actually carrying the cement mixer on the truck bed so this is a cement mixer truck it's huge the cement mixer and this cement mixer is very heavy and you need to rotate this cement mixer all the time slowly or fast this lorry needs to be rotated so that the cement does not dry up so how do you determine what is the motor where do you put the motor here so let's say you are designing this motor this motor is to coupled to the cement uh, mixer so how much power do you need to give the motor? How kind of torque are you looking at uh, on this cement mixer? So you need to analyze and study something called summation of moment is equal to I alpha. What is the moment? To rotate this angular mass right and this is your angular acceleration angular acceleration so these are the things lah. simple more things fans if you go to certain mosque they have this huge fan huge fans and this fan is coupled directly to a motor now this is the fan this is the motor so what do you do so you need to know what kind of 
what kind of moment or talk the motor uh, specs in order to rotate this fan so this is what we are learning right now okay so something called equation of motion with uh, rotation about fixed axis so let's read we don't do a lot of reading here so when a rigid body rotates about a fixed axis the body's center of acceleration at point g can be represented by a tangential component and a normal component okay so this is the equation lah. <coughs> uh, normal uh, acceleration is equal to omega squared r and tangential component is equivalent to alpha Oh, why is this like this? Mm. It comes from here. V is equal to uh, this one. I think we've derived this before. S is equal to R theta. V is equal to R omega. Mm. A is equal to R alpha all these other things uh. Uh, next is this one summation of moment is equal to I alpha so this is one uh, important thing that we need to note also which is when the rotation when the rotation is not at the centroid or center of gravity we need to use something called parallel axis theorem to transfer to transfer the uh, angular mass or mass moment of inertia so what am i talking about let's imagine this one let's imagine that you have a pin join this is a pin join on this pin join you have a rod this is your rod what is the dimension of the rod the dimension of the rod is let's say 2 meter so if you're trying to rotate something like this you're trying to give it a moment is it very hard what kind of moment should you give to rotate this one let's say this moment is m a now look at the second case second case is i have the same pin join but now my beam is the same length two meter there you go two meter now where is my moment in order to rotate this one i want to rotate it that way eh? so hmm let's see i change this one this one i want to rotate it this way this one also i want to rotate it this way ha huh. what kind of effort should i put on into moment b is it worse or easier right i have the same thing this thing is called beam this thing is called beam also so both are beams both are same dimension both are having the same weight this one mg is at the center uh, at here this one mg is at the center of rotation uh. so in this case although the object at center of gravity does have the same i which is moment inertia now it has shifted shifted by how much uh, shifted by this much 
So something like this, you cannot analyze at IG anymore. You have to analyze at I not or I O at the center of uh, rotation. So something like this, you have to use something called parallel axis theorem. So you need to take uh, I G plus, I think it's MD squared R. This is the formula. This is the moment inertia at center of gravity. This is mass. This is uh, IG, lah, center of gravity. This is the distance that it moved. D. Distance. How much does it move? From the origin, so it moved by this much lah. It moved by this much. D. Uh, one meter. So you gotta uh, tackle this one. Parallel axis theorem. So this is the formula that I'm talking about, which is you need to find. Yeah, this part. If the rotation is already at uh, center of gravity, just use lah. If not, just uh, put one more lah, which is parallel axis theorem. And we have discussed this. Moment is equal to, okay, this has to be this one lah, summation of moment is equal to I alpha. Okay, when you're talking about alpha, the direction of it rotating is positive. Kalau dia putar macam ni, ini positif. Kalau it rotates counter, uh, if it rotates clockwise, clockwise is positif. The direction of moment is your positive. Uh, this works for yeah all dynamics. It's easier to analyze this way. Uh, this is the thing lah. M is the mass of the body. D is the perpendicular distance. M is mass of the body. D is the perpendicular distance between parallel Z and Z. Mm, okay. The distance it moved. Okay. Before we tackle radius of gyration, we guys, we need to look at a couple of properties first. Uh, these are the properties. If you have a solid cylinder, this is a solid cylinder. Let me take out a different color. This is for a solid cylinder. The value if the rotation is about this axis. Meaning, if you're looking from the side, it's like this. Lah. If you rotate this thing along uh, this axis, the moment is like this. Okay. And the I is equivalent to this one. Half mass times radius. This is your radius. Lah. R. Yeah, this works for some sort of cylinder. If it rotates this way, uh, kalau dia rotate macam ni, like this one. This one, the rotation has changed. How does it change? Same cylinder. But now, you are actually rotating it like this. The moment is like this. Uh, then it's different story already. It's harder to rotate. So for this part, you got to take this one. Do you have to memorize this? No, no need to memorize. All these tables will be given to you. What are other things? Huh? What are other things? Let's take a look at this one. Hoop. 
about symmetry axis. I suppose this one you can use for the cement, lorry cement. Hoop about symmetry axis. You can use this for a bicycle wheel probably. Bicycle wheel, uh, solid sphere, this one when you want to rotate planet Earth. Huh? Rotate planet Earth. Huh? This one, huh? sphere. And this is when you have a rod about center. And this is when you have a rod about the end. So, pay attention to these two things. Let me... Let me add something up. Mm, okay. So, rod about center is 1 over 12 ml squared. Okay, so let's do this. If you have a rod and you are rotating it at the center, like that, I... So, center of gravity is here, right? This is your G, CG. I is equal to, what is it? Look at this again. 1 over 12 ml squared. 1 over 12 ml squared. This is if it's rotating there. But, if it's rotating here. Oh, this one. This was the axis. Now this is the axis. What is this length? The length is definitely L. This is L. So, this is definitely the formula. 1 over 12 ml squared. So what happens when you shift? Where and how long did you shift? You shifted the axis of rotation to this direction. The length now becomes L over 2. This is still L. Okay. You shifted by L over 2. This is your D. So when this one has been shifted to here, O, so you need to follow the parallel axis theorem which is I not is equal to I G. This is I G la. plus M D squared. This is parallel axis theorem. So new one, new value is I G. Berapa? 1 over 12 M L squared. Distance M. D. So this one becomes L over 2 squared. Correct. Ah? So what happens now? 1 over 12 ML squared plus ML squared over over 4. Huh. So proper. Do it on the side. 1 over 12 plus 1 over 4. What happens now? Ini multiply by 3. Ini multiply by 3. So, dapat 12. So, ini dapat 3. 3 times 1, 4. 4 over... 4 over 12. 4 over 12 is what? It's actually 1 over 3. So, the answer... 1 over 3. So the answer would be 1 over 3 ml squared. This is the new value for angular mass or angular moment of inertia. This is the new one. New. Is it correct? Go up. There you go. This is correct. That is how you use Parallel axis theorem. Okay. So, let's do an example. What kind of example? Huh? 
So this thing is still valid now. This thing is still valid. It's actually quite good now. You've got all your formula here, linear and rotational motion x v a s is equal to v t yeah correct mass f is equal to m a momentum is equal to m v work is equal to f d power is equal to m v this one torque work is torque theta power is torque omega so everything works lah everything is still valid okay everything is still valid you can still use this formula is a good one so you gotta believe it you've learned all this learned all right ah one thing i haven't uh, taught you guys on something called radius of gyration mm -hmm -hmm. so radius of gyration so occasionally the moment of inertia of a body about a specified axis is reported using something called radius of gyration k so radius of gyration k k je lah hmm. what is it huh? how to convert so you have to convert to get the moment inertia why huh? why is this like this so we're gonna jump through uh, and look at an example later on yeah yeah I'll think I'll wait until we go to this example and I'm gonna explain to you guys We'll do simple ones first. <coughs> <coughs> we'll get back to that one. So, how to calculate moment of inertia? This it looks like a plate or a disc. Yeah, it's a disc. Thickness is 10 mm. So, in order to find this, you can uh, get the hole and minus the inner hole. Does this make sense? So typically what happens when you get a disc? You got to look at our tables like this. Is there something about a disc here? Hmm, apparently not. Huh? I don't have a value about a disc. This one. slightly complicated now nah? mm, okay so you got to use uh, density to get the mass and then uh, this one is about O and then you got to do this one is for the disk which is this one 14 and 73 and this one is for the hole which is 0. Point This is 1.473, this one is 0 0.276. Okay, so, yeah. And this one is for the to total lah. This one you have to minus. This one is minus. So, why is it so complicated? is complicated because the axis of rotation is not at the center of gravity anymore for a disk you can google it up disk d i s k c i at center of gravity is equal to m r squared and that's it oh no, no. half m r squared half m r squared i don't have it in your table here hmm yeah this one solid cylinder or disc symmetric axis okay so this is the thing lah half m r squared okay so half m r squared 
but you need to put something called parallel axis theorem why because your axis of rotation is at O you gotta do that okay since this one is rotating at O if it's rotating at G it's a straightforward case lah just take this one ini and then minus this one and then you're good to go okay But typically, uh, normally it's given. Why is it given? Because normally, you are going to be dealing with very funny shapes. Uh, something like this. What is this? It's a 100 kilogram wheel. It's huge. And it has a very weird shape. The shape is very weird. Okay. How are you going to calculate this one? Uh, for example, uh, spot rim. What does a spot rim look like? Probably something like this. My god, the best spot rim ever. Let's draw a spot rim. Huh? Spot rim wheel. Spot wheel rim. There you go. The best looking spot rim ever. So this spot rim is weird looking. It has hollow things. It has a weird shape. It has very cosmetically pleasing to the buyer for this spot rim. So there's no way you can calculate manually and make it accurate. On uh, this ini, kalau dia rotate ke sini kan? What is moment inertia for this spot rim? Very hard to do. Very hard to do. So something like this. Typically, we can uh, calculate it by using experiments, or you can uh, deduce it from your cat. So for this shape. We are will be we will be using something called radius of gyration. So typically, uh, radius of gyration we note at by O. No by O K O K O ni rotation dekat O ni lah. So the unit is meter or millimeter or whatever they give you. In this case. 500 mm this or uh, is for this rim it is shape dependent shape dependent meaning if they give uh, if the radius of gyration is 500 mm let's say you are using uh, aluminium alloy aluminium you can get this wheel to become slightly uh, less weight, lighter. Maybe if it's in aluminum, it's probably 30 kilo. If it's uh, cast iron, what should I write here? Cast iron. If it's cast iron, it's probably at this weight lah. 100 kilogram so both of them will have different weight ini berat lain kan ini pun berat lain but both of them share the same k same radius of gyration which is 500 mm so later on let's say the engineer wants to improve the design he has changed the shape of the wheel using a different material probably i don't know carbon fiber ka? the weight now becomes five kilo huh very lightweight still same k naught is still 500 
mm. So radius of gyration of an object is shape dependent. Uh, different weight. Different weight is okay. So when you get something like this, it's easier to convert. I you just have to use the formula for this one. Look at this formula. Formula for radius of gyration. Ig is equal to m kg squared. Ig. This is the formula. Ig is equal to m k squared. Is this correct? Yes, it's correct. So, masukkan je value. Uh, kalau aluminium berapa? 30 kilo lah. Kali dengan 0 0.5 squared. Dapat value. This is for aluminium. Kalau cast iron. Uh, you got to plug in 100 lah. Ah, uh, Berapa? Uh, that's the thing lah. So the unit is uh, kilogram meter squared. Kilogram meter squared. Oh, this one I did never told you guys. Huh? Moment of inertia. The unit is kilogram meter squared. So that's the thing with radius of gyration. Now, we haven't done anything, eh? Let's do something. Let's do something. I guess you, ha you guys have to write down lah in your notebook. Lah. You're going to write down all this. Hmm. I'm going to have to clear this thing up. Oh, I can use this one only, right? Clear erase all the ink on the screen. All right. First things first, I is equal to mk squared, mass 100 kilo, radius of gyration 0 0.5 squared. Dapat jawapan. What is the jawapan? 0.5 squared times 100, 25. Moment initial is... 25 kilogram meter squared. This is your I. Okay. Uh, the radius here is 0.6 meter. This is the radius, eh? So the radius to here, lah. Same, lah. Zero point six meter. If the wheel starts from rest, determine its angular velocity in time is equal to three second. There you go. Can you do it? What is the formula for you to do it? Summation of moment is equal to I alpha. The formula is very simple. This is the formula that you should plug in and use. So this thing will rotate this way, right? So this direction is positive. It's quite simple. So moment, 100 kali 0 0.6 due to the radius. Is there anything else? I don't see anything else. I brapper 25 alpha. So alpha you're gonna get 100 times 0 0.6 divided by 25. 2.4. 2.4 watt radian per second squared. 
this is the alpha so it rotates from rest p does not change so p is constant this acceleration is also constant okay this one constant mm, yeah determine its angular velocity in t is equal to three second probably you can use this one v is equal to v naught plus a t convert to angular omega is equal to omega naught plus alpha time Omega naught starts from rest 0. Alpha, it's actually 2.4 times 3 second. 2.4 times 3. You get 7.2. What is the unit radian per second? Because, because this is angular velocity in 3 second. So, that's how you do it. <laughs> That is how you do it. So if you give a uh, higher force, it's going to spin much, much faster. If you give a lower force, it's going to spin much, 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 much lower. So it uh, follows by this equation. Moment is equal to I alpha. Is there a point where this thing does not rotate at all? If the friction is greater, if you have friction and this moment is going to uh, be slightly reduced lah, due to the frictional. So, uh, yeah, the answer is 7.2, you are correct. Answer is here also, but you got to understand it. So, in this equation, it's using negative 25. I don't like this. Don't Don't follow this method. It's easier and less confusing if you are using uh, this method. Arah mana dia rotate, that is your positive. It's easier to handle. Mm. Okay. This one, we're going to clear it up a bit. Clear it up a bit. Uh, yeah, okay. So this is the first exercise. What is it about? It's about, yeah, the important thing from here. Applying the radius of Gyration. Radius of gyration. Next. This looks pretty similar. 75 kilogram. Man, this looks pretty similar. 250, 150 summer. You can try this on your own. How about this one? The moment is a hundred newton meter. Twenty kilogram. It slips as it rolls. Determine the angular acceleration of the wheel and the acceleration of the wheel center O. So this one, it has, hmm, you got to read this one first. Huh? Try it first on your own. What happens when you have uh, <coughs> kinetic friction? It slips as it rolls. This got to mean something. Try this out. How about the rest of the equations? There are plenty more. So we're going to be doing this, okay? We cannot skip. Let's do this one first. 
Is this so hard? I don't think so. This thing is very easy. But you gotta try it on your own, okay? This one. This one, you gotta pause the video and then do it on your own. Do it on your own. You gotta do this, okay? Let's do this. Do, 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 do. What is the answer? Write down the answer, okay? So we'll do this. Pause the video. Okay, so this is the next question that we are going to be doing. This is a wheel. It has a radius of gyration of 300 mm. This is the mass, 20 kilo. When the wheel is subjected to a couple moment, it slips as it rolls. There's a big thing here, slipping. It slips. If it does not slip, it's a different story. Yeah. Mm, determine the angular acceleration of the wheel and the acceleration of the wheel center O. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the wheel and the plane is 0 0.5. Okay, so now what do we do? Important things. So it slips as it roll. This is something that you have to address. Kalau dia tak slip is very easy. Now mind. Let's do this first. So this is the moment. And the moment is a hundred newton meter. This is the radius. So you've got uh, mg and you've got normal. This thing is rotating like this, right? So it's trying to kind of move that way. So you're going to have friction. So this is <coughs> kinetic friction so you can give it a name fk is equal to mu k times normal this is the moment lah. moment is a hundred newton meter so let's look at our equation uh, what is normal that is very easy yeah uh. Mm, summation Fy is equal to MAY AY is 0 Summation Fy is equal to 0 So normal minus MG is equal to 0 So normal is equal to MG Which is in turn is equivalent to 20 kilo times 9.81 sama dengan 20 by 9.81 196.2 ok never mind leave it here first what else have we got? We have something called uh, radius of gyration. So let's settle the radius of gyration first. I is equal to m k squared. M proper 20 kilo. Radius of gyration is actually 0 0.3 squared. What is the value? Kilogram meter squared. One point eight. This is the radius of gyration, lah. So you've got two part done. Uh, what else? Summation of moment is equal to I alpha. So you need to settle the summation of moment. 
this moment is actually 100 newton meter and the location is at O. Okay. So since it's rotating this way, this is positive. Let's take this as positive. So 100. There is no multiply anymore because this is already in newton meter. So what else? Mg is it involved? No. Normal is it involved? No. You only have this one. Ah. You only have friction, which is negative. Mu k times normal multiply by radius, which is 0 0.4. It's equivalent to 1.8 alpha. Okay. Is this okay? So let's solve this. 100 minus mu k. What is it? 0 0.5. It's already given here. Times normal. Normal we already solved, which is equivalent to this one. 196.2. 196.2. Mu k normal times 0 0.4. Is equivalent to 1.8 alpha. So solve this one. Seratus minus. Mm, 0.5 times 196.2 times 0 0.4. 39.24. 39.24 equals 1.8. Alpha, so alpha you're going to get minus answer, divide by 1.8, 33.75 or 33.76. This is your angular acceleration. What is it? Huh? Radian per second squared. So this is how you solve angular acceleration. Mm, angular acceleration. So if the object is rotating, it's rotating right and it's rolling lah, at an angular acceleration of not this one right, it's actually Alpha is equivalent to 33.76. So, what is the relationship of alpha? Hmm, do you know? How do you convert alpha into linear acceleration? If you still remember, it's actually A is equal to R alpha. So, the formula that you should use, oh, gone already, eh? to determine what is the acceleration of this uh, wheel uh, traveling, you should use this one. So, radius dia berapa? 0 0.4 kali je lah dengan alpha kita. 33.76. Uh, berapa jawapan? 0.4 times... 33.76 You're gonna get 13.5 Meter per second squared Inilah uh, Acceleration of this wheel traveling Provided There is no slipping No No slipping so if no slipping, it's very easy. You just uh, settle this one and get alpha is equal to 33.76. Use this equation. This is A tangential, right? This equation has been uh, has been developed before. Where does it come from? S is equal to R theta. V is equal to R omega. A is equal to R alpha coming from all this formula 
only works if the object is no not slipping so this is very important if the wheel is not slipping it travels properly properly eh so use this one no slipping tapi kalau dia slipping <coughs> dia pusing 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 tapi tak bergerak ha, then you have a problem already kalau dia pusing 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 tak bergerak it is slipping you have a big problem you cannot use uh, you cannot deduce it uh, immediately something like this you have to use a different one you have to look at the traction yeah so you cannot uh, you cannot use this one if it is not slipping like you are driving uh, normal driving right you are driving normal driving yes use this one if it is slipping then you have to look at something called traction so big word but you've heard this word before so you have to look at the traction lah. the forward uh, moving force is this one which is mu k times n so you have to use this formula lah. which formula you should use okay the formula uh, the force that we are looking at is something called traction force t r a c t i o n traction so just use this formula lah. summation of f is equal to m a what are the forces going forward in this direction there's only this one lah, which is which is this one mu k times normal okay ah. is equal to m a mu k berapa 0.5 normal berapa dah dapat dekat sini 196.2 6.2 mass berapa 20 kilo this is your a a berapa dapat jawapan kali 0.5 time 196.2 bahagi 20 so you get 4.5 905 so this is a weird case lah most of the time most of the time don't use this why you don't design your machine to be rotating at one place and slipping all the time no if you have a problem like that <coughs> you got to change it you got to put more weight here you don't want it to be slipping so calculating uh, this one it's not my worry point. Lah. You have to use this one. Because most, most of the time, our machines do not slip. So you can use this one immediately. If it slips only, you just use the traction force. Okay? Uh, next, this one is almost similar. You've got... Um, some load here what do we have here this is a load so this load has a weight you've got tension you've got okay <laughs> read the answer the question uh. 60 kilogram drum radius gyration 0 0.25 attached to a block having a mass of 20 kilo there you go convert the drums angular mass you got this one by using radius of gyration and then you have to use equation of motion lah. summation of moment is equal to i alpha moment is coming from the tension of the cable this one and alpha and then summation of fy is equal to m a y this one is going down so going is it going down or up this one i don't like the others huh? i prefer it mm. yeah you can use our convention lah 
going down is positive. You don't really have to follow the books. Use your own. Something that you have learned before. This one will become a positive. This one becomes a negative. This one becomes a positive. Yeah. Okay. So this one, you can do it on your own. Please do this on your own. And then check the answers. Next. This is a 30 kilogram disc starting from rest. What is the number of revolution it must make to attain an angular velocity of 20 radian per second? This is very, very interesting. And it's not so hard. Would you like to do this on your own? We have a couple more uh, examples here. I guess let's do uh, this one. Or do you want to do all? 